In previous episodes, we've shown how easy it is to deploy from GitHub Actions over to Azure. There's one thing that I keep getting stuck on, and that's managing the secrets for logging in. It works uh, for like a year or so, and then it just stops working because those credentials expired, you need to go and renew them, and it's like a whole thing. Uh, but there's a, a new way to do that where we can do those deployments without any secrets. Let's mash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. In today's episode, we're going to talk about ways to not keep secrets. So tell me all about this, because this happens to me all the time that these things expire. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, not all the time, but like once a year. Once a year. For, like clockwork. <laughs> for every place where you've configured this, right? So, mm -hmm. And it's just long enough that like you forget how you did it in the first place, and you have to look up how and to regenerate change. those credentials. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's a whole thing. And actually, it's a thing. It was a thing for our website. So we're going to go through and and fix this. Um, so our website is is hosted on GitHub, and we just have a GitHub action that goes and um, runs through the content, generates the HTML, and then pushes it up to Azure Storage, where it's then served through a CDN. And that's, that's our website. That's the whole process. Um, and currently, it's set up. It does an easy login. So it uses the Azure CLI to do this, um, does a login, and then it just does like a batch upload of all the content to blob storage. And then there's another command that goes and just um, refreshes the, the CDN to, to make sure that the content uh, goes in there. So it had expired. It was failing for quite a while. I went in and fixed that finally so that it's running again. Uh, but when I went in and I was looking at the logs here, it's probably kind of tiny, but on the on the little part where it does the Azure login, there's a nice little note here that says, "Hey, Azure login action also supports OIDC login mechanism." Uh, and I decided to click on that and kind of investigate. Hey, what does that even mean? Uh, and it's I'm pretty sure it's one igloo doesn't count. What's that? One igloo doesn't count. OIDC might yeah. have different a different acronym you oh, might you have think, in mind. You think yeah, so? It's the, it's the American OIDC, not the Canadian one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, the Canadian one is all about what counts as a town in the exactly. Northwest Territories. Right. One igloo doesn't count, no matter what the size. It's going to be at least two igloos to be a town. Today I learned. <laughs> no idea. All right. So it turns out that this is a, a whole other way that we can configure GitHub Actions to do that initial handshake and login with Azure, um, where we don't have to manage any, any secrets uh, for our workflow. Uh, so I read through this. I'll link to all the documentation, but we'll just work through it here um, live, and we'll see how it goes. So currently what we have is, oh, that's not the right place. Uh, when we go to app registrations, we have a service principle here called our ASP.NET Monsters site service principle. And this is a thing that currently the GitHub action uses to log into Azure. And it does that using these credit, cl this client secret that I've configured that's going to expire in about a year. And that's the thing we're trying to work away from. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to instead create one of these federated credentials that GitHub, the GitHub workflow will be able to use. And then we'll, we can just go and like completely delete this client secret. Um, so to do that, we just go add credentials here under, under federated credentials. And there's a few different scenarios you can choose from. We're talking about GitHub Actions deploying to Azure resources. That's exactly the scenario that we were just talking about. And we just need to tell it our organization. So that's the ASP.NET monsters. And the repo is, I should double check and make sure I'm getting this right. ASP.NET Monsters and the repo is website. And pretty good naming. Pretty good naming, yeah. Oh, and now I don't remember. When I did this the other time, it was actually an environment that was deploying. In this case, oh, I guess it's a branch. So the, we're deploying from master in this case. I think we're still calling it master on our website. Let's just go double check that. Yeah, master branch. Okay. And we give it a name. This is just for our own identification. Um, this is going to be deploy website from GitHub. 
So that's all there is for creating the, the federated credentials. Uh, this service principle already has permissions to go and deploy to that resource group. So if we go to that resource group, we'd see that this particular service principle has permission. It is probably a member of like, has the contributor role so that it can deploy resources into that resource group. Um, so that's all configured fine uh, now. And all we need to go do is, or the next thing we need to go do is modify our workflow. So we're just going to come in here and edit this. Where's the edit button? And there's a couple things we need to add. So the first one is we need to add this permission. So it needs to be able to get at the to ID token. It's just something we need to add to the workflow so that it can do this federated uh, login thing. And then the next thing we need to do is down here where it says AZ login, where we're doing that Azure login, uh, instead of passing in those Azure credentials that were going to expire and our secrets that we have to be really careful about managing, uh, we're going to change that now and we're going to pass in a few things instead um, that aren't secrets, uh, although they're still called secrets because of where they get stored in the GitHub workflow. But we need the client ID for that service principle. We need the tenant ID for the Active Directory tenant and then the subscription ID for our Azure subscription. So those are the changes we need to make. and Last thing we need to do is go into our settings for the repo and under our secrets and variables here for the actions, we get to remove the Azure credentials. Those can be deleted. Oh gosh. Oh, I just need an authenticator code from me. Hold yeah. on. No, this is from me. Oh, you, okay. Yeah. Security folks. Well, I would hope that the passcode would expire before between the time we. Oh, it will. <laughs> you, you get still. the message. Yeah. One time use. Yeah. Still. Um, okay, so that's gone, and now we just need to add those new ones that we were needing. So what did we call them? It was our Azure client ID. That one is going to come from the service principal. So that's over here. We've got the app client ID. So we'll just pop that in there. And the next one is the tenant ID for our Azure Active Directory tenant, which would be this guy here. And finally, the subscription ID, which would be Take a look at the resource group. I should be able to grab it from there. There's my subscription ID. Okay, now that those new values are available, I should be able to just go and save my workflow. Commit directly to master because that's just how I roll. And that should trigger the workflow to run immediately. And we'll find out if it worked. More specifically, we'll find out if we need to use the power of post record editing <laughs> to have it work instantly. That's true. But they would never know that, James. <laughs> <laughs> You just have to trust that we're doing everything live. Exactly. Now, going going back to the Azure portal there, while this is running away, did you did you already delete that other? Oh, I didn't that yet. We had no. there? Okay. We should do that. Um, yeah, it's not. Um, I don't think it's going to change whether or not this works, but it's just um, nice to show that you can delete that. And that was part of the point was to make sure that we didn't need to have that secret anymore. See ya. Well, changing yeah. configuration mid deployment is a way to guarantee success on any project. So <laughs> it's true. Look at that. Oh, Using OIDC nothing. authentication, federated token details. Looks like it worked for the login part. We'll see if the actual deployment succeeds. It's looking pretty good so far. Maybe. 
So I, th I think I'm just mentally going to apologize because the, um, the gap between the times that I'm working on this stuff is getting increasingly large. But um, I, I feel like I, I, the information that you, you gleaned from the app inside Azure is the, um, the, the application ID, the tenant ID, and the subscription ID. Those feel like those are relatively discoverable if somebody wanted to find them. So what's the piece that's securing this connection for us to prevent unwanted deployments? What's the secret or the shared piece? We've made an association. I guess we've logged into Azure with GitHub already uh, to do that uh, that initial join, right? We've we've said like we've, I guess in Azure we've logged into GitHub with our our credentials. We've done that direction. So now this is just using a combination of these things. Yeah. Then? So I don't know the mechanics of how this federated workflow thing works exactly, but there's a trust between GitHub and Azure that's already kind of been created. And then they're able to uh, negotiate the login based on the information we've given them. So it's only our workflows that run in the, in the context of our org and our repo that will have these permissions and only if we set up the workflow in a certain way. Right, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that we're worked. limited by branch too, which is I think yeah. handy because yeah, a lot so... of the time, one of the attacks that I hear a little bit about is putting or like forking a repo and running a, a job against it mm -hmm. in the the Azure or the the actions and using that to dump out the secrets, which yeah. you can do. Um, but in this case, the secrets are not particularly secret, and yeah. I think the ability to fork a repo now um, and extract secrets is kind of gone. Uh, and if we're only building off of that mainline branch, there shouldn't be any concerns here. Yeah. And there are other protections in place too, in terms of like, if somebody were to submit, if we did have this running on pull request branches and somebody submits a pull request and they've never submitted anything before to our, our repo, we have to, there's like a manual check in place where we have to mm -hmm. click a button be the owners of the repo click a button to allow that workflow to run nice. the first time so there's there's different checks and balances in place but yeah that that ability for people or the the potential for anybody to go and grab secrets from it now is is gone it's it's a lot harder for them to to do that and the code has to get all the way up into master for it to um to actually do a deployment um, so hopefully you have protections in place around master so that people can't just go and um, push directly to master like I did. Um, that's always a good safeguard to have in place too. Well, this is amazing. I mean, if, if the only thing here was eliminating that uh, yearly expiry, I'd be happy about it. But mm -hmm. the added security is great on top of it. So I'm definitely going to start using this yeah. once credentials expire. Yeah, my our um, our site for our business actually is up here in uh, twenty six days. So I mine this will be very relevant for me in the coming weeks here too. Good timing then. Yeah, it's about this time every year where our site goes down for other reasons <laughs> similar to this expiring deployment credential stuff, all those things. So yeah, that's great. This is wonderful. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. So remember to like, comment, and share, and we'll see everybody on next week's episode. Cheers. Bye.